and welcome back to the European Yu-Gi-Oh! Championship live from Antwerp. We just had a very exciting round in round 10 where Marcus swept a two-game victory in under 10 minutes. Will we see the same thing happen here? Who knows? No pressure, guys. So to introduce our duelists for round 11, we have Adam Fleming, and we also have an accomplished duelist, topping remote duel invitational, and second in the UK Nationals, Mr. Alex Robertson. So we are now going to get straight in to our dice roll so that we can see which one of our two duelists is going first. Who would like to roll the dice first? Both six, our first double roll of the tournament. You can't make up tension like this. Okay, so you're going to start, Alex? Right, guys, best of luck. So I'm going to hand you guys over to Sebastian and Leonard, our German commentary team. Guys, take it away. Once again, thank you very much, Ed. We are back for you guys, and we have a very, very cool twist happening now because we just had that sweep from Marcus Patel and we couldn't really see what the Rika deck is about. We just luckily found ourselves a featured match of one of his good mates, Alex Robertson, the second place finisher of UK Nets, who's also actually on this deck, crazily enough. Yeah, I think there's one more friend of them and they yes. are all performing so well. I think it's also the same exact deck list. Exact same deck list and it was quite funny because we already wanted to feature them yesterday. But they were like, no, 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 day one, we can't have a featured match. Our deck is so spicy, nobody's allowed to see it. But day two, they were like, okay, everybody knows by now. They saw us playing at the top tables, so we can be in the featured match as well. So yeah. we just used that double chance. Now first Marcus and now Alex. And uh, I would say his opponent is also playing something quite cool. The best thing about our conversation with, with Marcus was that he said, yeah, nobody knows how to play this deck and we don't want people to prepare overnight after yeah. watching the featured match and we were like yeah we have a deck feature in the coverage yeah <laughs> <laughs> absolutely absolutely but yeah the players are waiting and we finally want to see that rika combo going off so i would say no more time wasting let's get into this round 11 featured match let's start it right here we are hyped for this rika sun avalon deck Absolutely. Did we already talk about the deck of his opponent, which is also Not really yet, spicy. but it's going to pop up on the screen there in a second. And it is really spicy. And it actually was the reason we took him for the featured match. Yep. And just by coincidence, we had Alex Robertson as his opponent there. Yeah, we have Altergeist in the featured match again. Altergeist, a deck that Basti and I have also heavily played. I even took this overseas. Uh, I brought this to California. Pasadena. Yes, fun fact, last European Championship, I piloted Altergeist. Yeah, was so it, was I really it a have good a passion choice? for this deck. And uh, Alex Lokai. Robertson is nice. normal summoning the one card starter. We're starting off with the Lokai, and he's, of course, just Link summoning it into the Dryas. This yeah. is the start you're looking for, your one card starter. And I will have a check on the deck list of our friend Adam Flaming, now who's the on the Altergeist deck. Searched. What and does he have to prevent all of that? I'm checking on hand traps. I mean, one very, very, very prominent hand interaction for the Altergeist deck is, of course, infinite, infinite Impermanence, because it is a trap and it can trigger your multi-faker. So very obviously, he's on that. But besides that, there's only three Ash Blossoms. So that's not really his main plan. He doesn't go for the hand trap heavy approach in his main yeah. deck. But I mean, if you have Ash Impermanence, then this might even stop your opponent's turn. Maybe this would have also been already been summoned. And now that we have the Sunset Lokai back on the field again. Yeah, probably. If I learned something by talking to Rika players, Rika Sun Avalon players, maybe, uh, you just want to throw that impermanence on the Link 1. You just want to instantly throw it onto the dries and then yeah. pray that your opponent is not able to continue from there yeah. on. Absolutely. Yeah. And there in the extra monster zone, we have the plant starter that has been guilty for most of the FTKs we have had with any plants and shenanigans, or big bots at least. Aroma Seraphy Jasmine that special summons a plant monster from the deck as soon as you gain health, if I remember correctly. Yeah, and uh, the reason that is happening is instantly right underneath her. Oh no, you just tribute something. Yeah, 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 true. But, but ah, he, you he also add gains. On LP. You yeah. add on LP a gain, but you tribute a monster to a special or something. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, we see him already in the motions. And this is like, we, we talked about it at the end of our last feature match. We couldn't, we couldn't see it. Um, this is like the point where you have to decide on which route you're going to take. And that is yeah. happening right there. And I think he searched out a Rika card. It looked a little bit like Rika Princess, but I couldn't totally see it. 
but it looked like Rika Princess. Rika Princess being one of the cards that was just introduced. No, I, I don't think it was Rika Princess. Well, I think it was Snowdrop, the Rika Fairy. Was it Snowdrop? Snowdrop would make sense, but that's also a completely different Rika. It's actually quite funny that he's playing so many Rika cards that he can fit in that big of a Rika engine, but it really is a Rika deck, let's be honest. And now he summoned Mudan. Mudan summoned itself by tributing one plant monster. Indeed it does. And I think Mudan, I, I even like a little bit more than the um, than the other one you were just talking about, the, the Teardrop, because uh, Teardrop, oh no, the Snowdrop, not Teardrop. No, but he added the Snowdrop, I think Mudan was a hard draw. Yeah, but, but for Mudan you only need to tribute one monster, and for Snowdrop you actually rely on having another monster yeah. in hand you can special summon alongside it, so it's not really like a starter on its own because it relies on having more cards in your hand to work with. Oh, but there we finally have the Patal. So Marcus Patal couldn't summon it, but we have the Rika Patel here working for his friend Alex Robertson. And there is the field spell now as well. Finally, we see this for the first time as well. Rika Concon, a card which gave an insane push to the strategy yeah. because it has such a strong permanent effect and also a cool effect on activation. Walk us through the two effects again. I mean, I, I'm even surprised that this card came out so late because when you look at the deck, it looks like this card is the strategy of the for deck. For real, yeah. This card, if you have a Rika monster on the field, you can set a spell trap with Rika in the name. And once per turn, when you should tribute a plant monster, you can tribute a monster on your opponent's side of the field instead. And this is especially crazy, crazy with Rika Sheet. Which he just sat, yeah. Yeah, which he just sat. Because you can tribute a monster on your opponent's side of the field and then negate and take a monster on your opponent's side. Absolutely. And now there's the first card basically on the board, which will be part of the end board. This is the Bangle Lancer. And the Bangle Lancer actually is a bounce on the opponent's turn. And as you can see here, the good part about this deck, the good part about the Rika deck is that it's so flexible. It does not only provide monster interactions on the field, it also has free back rows here. And the back rows are crazy because Rika Sheet, as you just said, for example, actually is able to tribute an opponent's monster and then also, by its own yeah. effect, take control of the monster until the end of the but turn. Look at Bangalance's artwork. This card looks phenomenal. It this really is a plant. One of the coolest cards that are in the game. If you're looking at the artwork, for sure, yeah, it really, really is a big plant. So link four plant, fitting artwork for that, I would yeah. say. It's a tree, and it's also like hot. Is there a magma in it? Very cool. And there we see a very, very old card, which has been used many yeah. times. Whenever I see this deck, I think back of uh, Jack Verma being our national champion of Germany yeah. with this deck. Not too long ago, 2019, actually. Yeah, and this card you're on permanence. That's a really ah, one hundred percent. You do that. Y you have to because Marionetta actually can set up the Altergeist Protocol permanent trap card, and this card, when it's face up on the field, disables you from negating your opponent's Altergeist effects. So uh, yep, as soon as you let that there. resolve, your impermanence is pretty much dead. But this is a very new card we have for the Altergeist theme. Pukuri. It is Pukuri. This was released not that long ago and it was included into Adam's deck here. You can see it on the screen. And uh, this definitely gave him an option to extend further even though he got interrupted there. That reminds me very much of... Uh, Microcoder, right? Microcoder, yeah. For sure. It is pretty similar. It allows you to link summon from your hand. So he could just put the Pukuri to the graveyard alongside the Altergeist. Marionetta and he got away into the Hextia, which you can see on board there. And this is really crazy because Ricochet disables your opponent from playing if they have two monsters on board, but <laughs> if you use Pukuri from hand or Pukuri, then there are never two monsters on board if you just summon Hextia. But the funniest thing is that even though you're going into a Link 2 monster now, it really doesn't really do too much. It's it's very the thing is, the cool thing is and it's bounced already. As, as, oh, it was bound. Yeah, of Bangalore course, answer. he just bounces. I just was about to talk about the cool fact that if he tributes it, then he will be able to get to search Altergeist yeah. Multifaker, which is the heart and soul of the deck, of course. But when you bounces, that obviously it doesn't happen. So that's really unfortunate for Adam there. Yeah. Now Alex will have to deal with maybe Mystic Mind because there are this triple demise of the land. In the deck of Adam. Oh yeah, oh true, he's playing Demise of the Land, so he's playing the Mind Package, so he definitely has to be careful about that here. He doesn't really want to give his opponent a chance to resolve Demise of the Land, and quite honestly, there are a couple of ways to play around Demise of the Land, because Demise of the Land is worded as an when trigger, so it is 
potentially possible for the car to miss its timing. Yeah. Therefore, you can actually just do something uh, which is special summoning as you're chaining one, and then do something else after. And then you, oh wait, the other way, All around. way around. But yeah. then you can actually chain block it in a way, and then your opponent is not even able to actually activate the demise of the lance. Oh, he knows. He knows that Altergeist players are packing this Mystic Mind demise package. So he's just thinking, yeah, my opponent didn't have any steam last turn. So why don't I just attack, go for over half of the HP, and just chill? Basically, this is very patient of Alex, and. This is feeling like an easy win for him. I mean, it looks pretty good, but Adam has three set cards, and imagine like it is, for example, just a manifestation to reborn the multifake, and then you chain the yeah, spoofing. No oh, though. I mean, I mean the marionetta, but then you chain the spoofing, for oh. example, just shuffling it away. Oh, oh we have there the we go. Rika Glamour, is it? This definitely is Rika Glamour, yeah. But you actually do have to tribute your own monster for that, yeah, which is pretty, pretty unfortunate. And, oh, what is he throwing down for that? This looks must be Ash Blossom, right? It's kind of tough to tell, but it has to be Ash, Ash Blossom. Does he already have the little princess in the GY that negates a card? Nope. He only has a Patel, which looks quite similar to the princess, but it's not. And there it comes. Oh, yeah, of right. Of course. Once you print, uh, tribute this Rika Exceeds monster, which I will get up Strana, in just yeah. a second. Good old Strana. Yeah, and it has material then you can just summon a different Exceeds monster from the extra deck or from, from the GY and use Strana as the Exceeds material. And there we have a big tree beast. Yeah, the sacred tree beast. Which I unfortunately can't get up for you guys. Yeah, but it is basically uh, a negate. Oh, and look, he is just instantly using the negate oh. to use uh, to tribute. Oh, no, it, it just attaches something and then it will... Wait, does it even negate? He's going to his deck. He's actually activating the Mystic Mind. So maybe that was a little bit uncautious of Alex yeah. Robertson here because he pretty much played around that Demise of the Land in his main phase one by just going battle phase. But now in main phase two, he was feeling a little cheeky and he went for another special summon. And there he goes and activates the Mystic Mind from deck through the effect of Demise of the Land. Absolutely. And oh, this looked like anti spell fragrance to me. So I was a bit confused, but it's rivalry of the warlords, right? It is rivalry of the warlords on the side of Alex, yeah. Card that doesn't do too much versus Altergeist. Yeah, the deck itself is actually playing it. Let me see whether Adam is also playing. Yeah, Adam actually is playing a card in his main deck as well. So that will be a pretty easy side out for both players here. So it is the epic match versus of spellcasters versus plants. Yes. And we are about to have some chill turns i think as soon as but as soon as alex actually founds uh, finds like something such as another rika glamour for example he should yeah. be good to go because he can just tribute the rika he can just tribute the mystic mine actually yeah. to resolve the rika glamour because he still has the rika con con up on field so that's really cool for him does con con also let you oh. tribute spell or trap cards look he just said it he just said it oh oh wait can, right. can, can you not can you not attribute Go ahead. Is it just monsters? That would be really unfortunate. We just look into Rika Con Con again. Any one face of monster you're Oh, it's also. only monsters, so that's actually no. not an out in that case. So. But I think he could go into a Link to Plant card and then go for Glamour and just search, search something. True, true. So you can actually just get rid of the one monster he has on board. But that is a problem. Because Okay, so he just uses one monster because his opponent is still playing uh, he's still playing. Like mine is not the only option for his opponent. He has had a turn to draw a card. Yeah, absolutely. And if you waste all of your resources on just clearing your entire board, then maybe your opponent has a chance to bounce back. Yeah, that's the thing with Altergeist. Uh, I actually tried this version of Altergeist recently as well. And Altergeist is a very slow deck, so it needs time from time to time to actually be able to participate in a matchup with a combo deck. So. Mystic Mind actually is there to provide you that time you need. And when you get that time, now resolving Pot of Extravagance as well, then it actually is kind of nice. And you will be able to compete with a deck because you have so many traps. Oh, and there's it's, Multifaker. Uh, there is Multifaker and Solemn Strike in your hand. So yeah. I think we're going into a good direction for Adam here, to be honest. Solemn Strike, still a little bit dangerous for him, got to be honest. Yeah. But what I like most about the Altergeist deck, together with Mystic Mind, is that you can really juggle with the spoofing, personal spoofing that just lets you summon Mellow Seek, take a card of your opponent's board, chip for 500, and then just shuffle it back to add 
another resource back to the hand. 100%. Yeah, like you have many ways to actually influence the number of monsters on your own side of the field. Also, circuitous can just uh, make sure you are actually having a different amount of monsters on the board. Oh, but look, there's another glamour. So Alex Robertson is actually able to clear it off yeah. here. He will just go into end phase, I would assume, and then the Mystic Mine is about to be done for this game. Doesn't yes. rivalry stop your own ricochet? Um, I mean, in some way it does, yeah, because you can't really take control of yeah. non-plant monsters, you're right. So there is normal summon of Silketus. Adam actually now going into his Altergeist engine and he's activating Mystic Mind yeah. right, right next to it. So he actually wants to resolve the next copy of it and therefore even summons a monster himself. But as no. soon as Alex now is summoning a monster to actually make sure they have even monster numbers for Mystic Mine, yeah, there will... must be a spoofing set so he can just shuffle away his own monster again. He will personal spoof the hell out of him. Yes, I would be pretty sure about that. So Adam, like in this particular moment, looks like he's in a driver's seat, honestly. It is looking quite good because he is control of the game now and Alex has to react. But look, in the end phase, of course, he is using the Rika Patal. I don't think Adam thought of that. He only, he could not really activate his wow. spoofing yet because it probably was just still set. Mm. And Alex Robertson, of course, uses the effect of Patel in the end phase. I was a bit surprised it's that he Patel, didn't do it. Pat, Pat, yeah. It has to be Patel from now on yeah, because, okay. honestly, this guy is crashing with the deck. So we have to rename the card, of course. And uh, yeah, I think Adam might have forgot that a little bit there. And the... Yeah. I the think so. Now the driver's seat has switched. I would, I would agree. I guess that looks not too good because also now it's not just a vanilla body on board, but the Patel actually is able to search for a Rika card now. But Alex still has four set cards, which could all be interruptions very much. He had multiple turns to set up those back row cards, and I wouldn't be too surprised if there's also still some interruption left. And I mean, there has to be spoofing, there right? Is, there is a Solemn Strike set that we know of, but then Adam is left at 800 life points, so he theoretically wouldn't even be able to activate Premature Burial. It's a dangerous game he's playing there. Yeah. I think we're now using Bengal Lancer effect in Graveyard to, rebu to Reborn itself. That must be the case. This card is so good. Bengal Lancer is really strong. Look, yeah, Adam has to double check on the card as well. Maybe looking whether it is a plant, but yes, they're all plants. It is a plant-based deck, and I'm very happy, honestly, that we see all of these cards now in this game, because uh, in the match of Marcus Patel, which we had last round, we basically couldn't see a single combo piece there. Yeah. <laughs> but now we basically already go through all of the Rika and all of the other plant cards in the game one already. So now he is summoning Mudan the Rika Ferry again. Yeah. Just also bring that up for you guys so you can have a idea of how all the Rika cards look and what they do. Yeah, such iconic artworks as well. <laughs> look, now Adam also in the same column as Alex actually activates his rivalry of the Warlords. So two rivalries looking at each other, not doing anything, but it does what it needs to do it for Adam because it is a trap card. A it actually has a purpose and it, it does, does not pay the 1.5k and wait until he can summon the... Oh, okay. So, there is the Solemn Strike now. Okay, so apparently he attributed the... He must have attributed the Silk, yeah, for sure. For what, though? I'm not 100% sure either. Ah, wait. It must have been for, for Mudan then, yeah, right? Yeah, for Mudan, right. You can tribute one plant monster to special summoner. So Adam has a decision now again because... Does he have the protocol? Yeah, I think the left card is protocol. Oh. No, he isn't activating protocol. He's just taking his card and scooping it up. So Alex leads with the 1-0 with his Rikus and Avalon deck. For sure. So this deck just seems unstoppable. Like. Marcus played it insanely well, even though he had <laughs> to play we, a lot. We, we didn't really see how he did. Very yeah, but well let's talk the about the whole story of these guys. I think they are three friends. Yeah. All doing insanely well with that rogue deck, you gotta say, because nobody really was expecting Rika to go strong here. And I think we, we saw the record of Alex. Alex is 
not even defeated this tournament yet. He, I think he's on one draw only. I so think that's possible. Yeah, we can check that later when we go back to the other overlay 100%. again. One hundred percent. And like Marcus Patel is one of the few players being undefeated in the tournament. So it's crazy how the deck is performing. And now let's see what the deck actually is able to put on top of the already cool cards in his main deck uh, into the side deck. What is he going to bring in here? Ah, going second these versus are this other guy's deck. Hurt. For sure, this looks really good. Like, Dino Wrestler Pankratops has always been a big problem for Altergeist ever since 100%. it's been around. Every time you saw the Pankratops, you were just annoyed by everything, basically. It's just never a good time to play against it. Yep. And also evenly matched, so also Hoppy's Feather Duster. I mean, since, There's a lot. Since Hoppy's Feather Duster has been around, there hasn't been much Altergeist play. Yeah. Not gonna lie, but I can just imagine how annoying it has to be when oh, you get Feather boy. Dusted as an Altergeist player. I have that feeling personally. It's a shame. For nah, real. Like, I, you yeah, don't want to yeah. be in your seat when your opponent activates it. But let me talk about Adam's deck list a little bit. He actually has ways to counter that, multiple <laughs> ways to counter that in his side deck. He's actually siding Triple Sodom Judgment, a card that saw more play lately. A lot of decks are actually playing this generically as an out to Dark Ruler, or maybe just also negating the Norman yeah. Son of his Sprite deck, stuff like that. But also, he did not only pack these, but there's also Dark Bribe in there, so he really doesn't yeah. want to get Feather Dusted. I think it's pretty unlikely we're going to see a Feather Dusted resolve here. Also, there is something really interesting. He is side decking Dimension Shifter. Oh, yeah. So, of course, this is a great card against almost all the decks. So, my question is, because you can also use it going first and going second, why are you not main decking it? The disadvantage of not being able to go into Link Rebo yeah. with Melosy can't be that bad that you decide not to run Dimension Shifter. This card auto-wins you so many games. Okay, when you're playing Altergeist, you don't auto-win games I think because uh, you just g get yeah. a turn. I, I, I do have an explanation, or at least I, oh. I could see an explanation, because we saw Sprite players actually starting to side deck Dimension yeah. Shifters as well, and there's a lot of Sprite here in this yeah, event. That's and true. so this card in the main deck versus Sprite is actually not that insane. I mean, it still stops you from going into Totally Awesome, which is it a big does. part of the combo and the grind game as well. And that's where you want to get with the deck. But I mean, if players of the deck actually decide to play the card themselves, how bad can it be? Like, yeah, but that is just because it, is, it makes two matchups being Math Mag and Telemans. Telemans. How did I forget about Telemans? 100%, uh, yeah so much better. The card is insane versus them, so the Sprite players have decided that, okay, I can end on a Gin Buster. It's, it's okay, but... Uh, yeah, speaking yeah. of insane, the players are insanely ready for game two, so let's go over to the table, let the players play, and we will be seeing whether the Altergeist strategy going first, which is the natural habitat of an Altergeist player, is able to put up more than in game one. So let's see, Adam. Did you draw into your Dark Bribes and Solemn Judgments or not? Nice we can already see some spell cards in there, that's for sure. I think spell he, he started... Spell cards are always great, except for Mystic Mind it's when you're starting. Except for Mystic Mind going first, that's not really what you want to see. No, Is he maybe going for another activation of Mystic Mind by just having a monster himself, which he did last game as that well? That is possible, as long as he has personal spoofing, he just sets the... Manifestation, manifestation. Yeah. So that means he probably has a protocol already. Very, very likely. It and must. Now he be. activates it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, like in general, you're always setting protocols. So if you're setting the manifestation, you are already indicating yeah, to your opponent that it. you do not really have okay. uh, that you do have the protocol alongside. But that means that there's no personal spoofing here. Alex sets one card. And now I'm confused. Oh, he breaks hard or does not want to commit think, into Mystic Mind. I think he Mind. just doesn't want to commit I into think, Mystic Mind. Yeah, he just also considers this time that he is being giving, given until he can draw cards or draw side deck cards. Like, he's just sitting there, okay, I can't take damage either. If I could take damage, it wouldn't be too much. So let me just also sit on your Mystic Mind because you, my friend, just locked yourself out and I'm waiting for my Harpy's Feather Duster. Yeah, I think so as well. Alex is just sitting there chill and we see he has so many options in his side deck, so many back row removal oh, cards that he could actually summoned. do a lot of stuff. He is summoning the paddle here for real. And Adam now knowing that we, they both have one monster on board, there would be a way to just instantly, if he has the personal spoofing, shuffle away the marionetta so that the Rika paddle, I think, is Rika paddle activating its effect on summon? No, it's just doing the main phase. So he could have just shuffled the marionetta away and the paddle would have not been able to use its effect, but he just lets it resolve. So maybe there's not even the spoofing set. 
Oh, so Mudan is being summoned again, tributing the Rika Petal. Rika Petal, of course, always being able to summon itself back from the graveyard in the end phase. It's such a free resource, right? Yeah. It's amazing how Petal works for the deck. And we see him using Mudan a lot as well, so that seems to be very much his main point of going to after the Petal, and he prefers the Mudan over the Teardrop a lot. Yeah. I love how grind grindy effects have made their way back into Yu-Gi-Oh! There were some formats in the past few years where the grind potential didn't really have an impact. It was just your first turn board, and now there's this. Now you also have like effects like summon me back in the end phase, and in the main phase you can search something again, and people are relying on it. People want it. They are like, okay, I can't OTK you at all, so let me just gain extra resources wherever I can and then outgrind you and I love this. Yes, shifter. and we have the Dimension Shifter now. And there comes the Con Con. Of course, he wants to activate the effect of Con Con on activation to set himself Rika Glamour, of course. And I love this Rika Son of a Long deck because before the release <laughs> of Power of the Elements, we did just have the Son of a Long deck searching for something that he could put inside the deck alongside of it. Yeah. So like Ferions we played, we also played the Adventurer package of course, but now Rika just seems like the perfect fit for the deck. It just seems like the perfect mix of both of both plants engines there. You actually could fit plants to a plants deck, so that's really, really fitting. And, yeah, okay, so like Adam just set another card, and Alex in the end phase just summoned back Rika Petal, so that Mystic Mind gets destroyed, and I think it's Alex's turn now, right? It looks like it for sure. Three set cards still for Alex Robinson. One of them being Rika Glamour, we saw that, so he could already start distributing the Marionetta there if he wants to, but honestly, the Marionetta itself is not that big of a deal. And also, there's the manifestation set, so he could, whenever he wants to, get it back. I don't know whether it would be too appealing to get back the Marionetta, yeah. but let's see what he's doing here. That is a normal summon monster called Sunseed. Locus, Loci, Lotus, Sunseed Flower. I, this is Sunseed Genius Loci. Really? Yes. It obviously is genius. Look yeah, at it. Absolutely. It is absolutely genius. <laughs> Please read us the flavor text there. <laughs> Listen up closely. This seed can only be harvested from the sacred tree you runs every thousand years and will become the guardian spirit of its land after a thousand more. I have seen players, or rather viewers in the area here, roll their eyes at this. <laughs> But yeah, let's oh, see. Oh, spoofing. We are spoofing now. I'm a little bit surprised. I would have expected Ooh. him to have spoofing earlier. Oh, and the impermanence just came onto the Marionetta to negate the spoofing, and Faker was revealed. And we are tributing Marionetta now as well. But still, Faker was revealed, right? It looked like it was, yeah. 100%. Wouldn't you much rather tribute the Silkoidus for cost at some point? Okay, so no Faker here? It looked like there was Faker, but apparently there wasn't. I mean, there's still just the Loki on field, so yeah. maybe we're still in that window of resolving the current chain yeah. and Alex is just thinking about what to do, but no, 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 he's going on. He is using the effect of Petal here. And Adam did not use Multi-Faker effect yet, I would, I would think. Okay, so maybe he just showed a card in hand that he wanted to shuffle back and then he put it in the deck and then the impermanence hit. Potentially, yeah. No. But I mean, wouldn't you just try to shuffle back the Marionetta? That, I think that would have been the plan, but apparently not. Maybe he just has yeah. a Silk in his hand as well, which he really needs to get rid of. Because Adam still has a couple of cards in hand, which is True. not really usual for the deck. So maybe he actually bricked on yeah. double Silkages or something, and he really needs to shuffle it back to the deck to actually have it available as a resource once more in his main deck. And he got punished really hard. And now he's activating the Sewing. If that was the case, it also is like a reveal to your opponent that if you want to shuffle back that silk from your hand, he pretty Wait, much so. knows that there is no more. For the rest of this turn, all other spell trap effects in this column are negated. Is this card negated right now? He's activated in the Imperm column, right? Um, I, I, don't, I didn't really see it even. I'm going to... Uh, yeah, I, you just go ahead and ask him maybe. Yeah, yeah, like, go ahead. So we are just confirming whether that impermanence did resolve so no worries, we are already on it and we're going to double check as Alex is moving on with his combo and we see more Son of a Long cards. And there we have it, yep. 
more trees. It's just a plant-based deck. And I think back in the day, it usually was uh, the case that all the plant decks were just little plants growing. But now this theme, that Son of Long theme, actually is showing you growing trees. It's, it's get, they're getting bigger and bigger. And that in the end, it's going to be Bangalanza, which is the biggest tree you could ever imagine. So, Leo, you talk to him. Any thing you want to tell us. Okay, apparently the impermanence was negated in a different zone. Ah, oh, okay, fair and enough. Fair enough, so there is the reborn of the Loki. I'm quite confused as to why he negated the marionetta that didn't even do anything. But, uh... So, we're going on, we're going on. Maybe he just wanted to make sure to just yeah. get rid of another back row, because yeah. he was sure he's going to tribute the marionetta, and he wanted to rule out another back row, yeah. so he could just safely go for OTK. I think that's yeah. a pretty pretty uh, reasonable line he could take there. But it was negated anyways. So, there now, of course, in oh, that early on mistake, we say card. teardrop, but it is snowdrop, of course, yeah. and alongside it, the OG card, as you say. Phantom Darkness, Lone Fire Blossom, one of my favorites. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Being a plant enabler since back in the day, back in the day, Tengu Plant. Do you still remember Tengu Plant? This card was insane. I do in have plants. two Tengu Plant decks at home. <laughs> Perfect. I do remember this form. It was great. So, we are seeing snowdrop on the field now, and of course, snowdrop is manipulating the levels there, making both of them level 4, so he could just XYZ summon into the Strena once again. And Strena, so he has a lot of attack power on board there already, and we know for a fact that Adam's one set is only the manifestation, which is just another body on board, but it's yeah. not really that big of a threat. And Alex actually tried to negate the other card with the Imperm, but did the Imperm resolve in the end? I think it did, right? It just negated another column. Yeah. So I'm quite sure that the one back row is actually being negated by Impermanent yeah. at the moment, and the other back row is just Manifestation. So actually, I Alex has correct. perfect information here. So I think we, we figured out why he used that Imperm in that column there. He just wanted to rule yeah. out all the interruptions That's that his true. opponent had, and now he's easily able to cruise and go through, and he could actually just seal it right here, I think. Yeah, I mean, playing around to Mice of the Land is pretty strong if you know that uh, Spoofing was activated without effect. Yes. And the other card is Manifestation without a good target. I mean, you can always target the Marionetta, but where does that get you? There is now the Manifestation. We are reborning a Marionetta. That is not what you want to do. But we can, of course, chain the effect of Spoofing, which will give us access to the Multi-Faker in hand. And on top of that, the, ma the manifestation is still going yeah. to resolve, so we will have that additional body on board, which we could maybe later on use oh, for... Oh, the queen is tributing the marionetta. And this is the handshake. This is the handshake. Alex Robertson with a quick 2 and out. A very, 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 very quick sweep here. The, the Decisive he just, victory once yeah. again. I mean, honestly, he just showed his opponent. He really relied on this mystic mind strategy, juggling with the... Uh, this personal spoofing that yes. never actually happened. No. Activating even Mystic Mine with a monster on his own board, so he was really relying on that strategy. But the paddle, the paddle played around Mystic Both Mine times. so much. Both, Both times, times it was yeah. paddle, yeah. He got into, into that uncomfortable situation yeah. of uh, actually having to summon monsters himself to be under the Mystic Mine lock to get time. But yeah, paddle. Also, paddle just keep, kept on paddling. It's crazy that the field spell searches a card that can tribute to your own monsters so that you never really have a problem with Mystic Mine, you know? It's absolutely massive. You can out Mystic Mine with your engine. Most decks have searchable Mystic Mine outs, yeah. but if you're looking at Sprite, you have the jet that has to search these measures. And if Mystic Mine is active, you can't use that the jet. doesn't help. <laughs> so I have a question for you now. We saw those Rika players, both of them being successful, defeating their opponents 2-0. And both of them pretty much now having their spot in the top 128 secured. How far will it go? What will be the best finish of a Rika player in this tournament? Where do you see this journey going? I mean, we haven't seen the deck perform versus... Okay, we have seen, perf seen it perform versus Most Telemans, deal, yeah. but uh, I mean, the side deck is crazy against the deck. Evenly hit it like a truck, not yes, gonna lie. for sure. Uh, versus Sprite, I think the side deck of them is I mean, still... Say. It's not that great. They have Ultimate Slayer, Slayer, Slayer but yeah, and besides yeah, that... Uh, that is, that is Altergeist. Oh, wait, yeah. <laughs> you're right, you're right. 
Yep. So we have Panker Tops, um, uh, we have Slayer, we have Feather Duster. Feather Duster can also hit really hard because I've seen multiple sprite players end on like three or four spell trap cards. Yeah, yeah, true, yeah. true. But uh, Absolutely right. Slayer is, is a crazy card. Uh, the Dex Natural going second, I don't know how strong it is. They are running triple tactic talents. They are playing Rivalry of the Warlords, which is a card that can easily be negated and destroyed. So maybe Sprite is a bit of a harder matchup, but cards like Rivalry make it look really easy going first. Yeah. And they are upping the Talemans matchup. So if they are maybe a little bit lucky and dodge some of the Sprite players, which I've, I'm sure they are also fine against. Like, if you start, this looks crazy good. 100%. But if they are not having too bad of luck, then I think that this could take down the event, not gonna lie. Yeah, it looks insanely good. It looks insanely consistent as well. Just always the one-card starters. You don't only play the low kites, but you also yeah, play die. multiple ways to get into it and just start off your day with it. Like, he's having a blast here. I think all of them are doing insanely well. They made yeah. a really good pick. They wanted to keep it secret for a while, but you guys now know that this Recar yeah. infection basically is going on and here. We have a plant infection at Visi Band, and it's looking of great. Of course, them. they are already already having the advantage that most of the players are not too familiar with the cards. Yes. We are in between the rounds. We are always scouting at the top tables, and also when Marcel and Alberto are casting. Of course, because we can't get too much of Yu-Gi-Oh. We just love Yu-Gi-Oh. Really Non-stop Yu-Gi-Oh for us this yeah. weekend. And every time I saw one of them play, the opponents they grabbed every card and like. Oh, why? Okay. Yeah. Well, I guess it resolves. Wait, you can tribute my monster for this? It was crazy. So people were not prepared yeah. for the deck at all. But you know who was prepared? Alex Robertson. So why don't we hear from him in the post-match winner's interview? Thank you, guys. Yes, I am here with Alex, who has just won another feature match in a row for us with a Rika victory, a 2-0 victory. First of all, Alex, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. How does it feel to be back at things like Euros? Obviously, we've just seen you at UK Nats yeah. and stuff, but how does it feel to come all the way to Euros as well this year? So, I'm looking, I've, I was looking forward to it because I've been wanting to go abroad with everyone, all my friends, everyone again. Um, and I'm looking at going to America later in the year, and this is like a really good start. And it's, uh, yeah, I miss these, these weekends, like, um, especially with the scooters all around Belgium, it's, it's been really fun. Yeah. It has been fun. It's yeah. nice to come to Antwerp. It's yeah. nice to see so many other people traveling from all over Europe yeah. just to come here. So we're going to talk a little bit about that match and about your decks. So obviously, yeah. we saw Marcus in the last yes. round, yeah. and you told me that you guys have almost a card for card deck, yeah. if not an exact card for card deck. Talk to us a little bit about that. You guys have crafted this together? Um, yeah, so after Nationals, uh, I got second at UK Nats with the Plant San Avalon Pile deck. Um, and I really like all the cards. I really like the cards. I like how the deck flows. Uh, so we know we knew these Rika cards were coming out in um, Pote. I cannot remember the full name. Um, thank you. Um, and yeah, so those cards are those cards are crazy. They're phenomenal. Uh, if anything, I think they're actually some of the best cards in the set, and no one no one knows them. Um, and when we were testing, we were just like, this deck is beating Tier Elements. It's beating Splite very consistently. Um, we changed it a few cards here and there. Um, and I've, I've been playing some tournaments in, uh, in the UK and I'm just not dropping games. So I was convinced on it. Uh, Marcus from last round was convinced on it. A couple of other friends played it as well. Um, and yeah, it's been really, really good. Because it went really well. You had a very dominant game one yes. that, that went very quickly. And then you managed to play around Mystic Mine yes. a couple of times yes. throughout that match. There was even one moment where you outed Mystic Mine to get Mystic Mind yeah. immediately after that, but you still managed yeah, to play this, around um, it. This deck has a, a really good uh, matchup versus Mystic Mind. It just doesn't lose to Mystic Mind because they activate Mystic Mind. It doesn't matter how many monsters you get to, you just clear down to one, tribute it away, mine goes. You still have like two or three interrupts normally, and then they can't win. Petal comes back in the end phase, and you're just winning. You're just, just yeah. That's brilliant. So obviously we've got ten wins, one loss. Yeah. So what was the loss against? Um, so round two, I played against this Pendulum guy. Uh, he was really friendly. Um, and there's this trap called Time Pendulum Graph, which is just one of the craziest traps in the game. Because uh, he, just, he just kept on outing two of my cards every game. And it's not this deck hasn't got the best trap matchup, despite what you just saw. So he just kept on outing two cards every single turn. And I, just, I just couldn't beat it, and I lost on tempo. Are there any other decks that you're nervous about going up against in the next couple of rounds? No, it's, it's been. I played a lot of Splite, a lot of uh, tier elements as well, and it's been fine. Yeah, lots of 2 0s. 
Okay, Alex, well, congratulations Thank again you. on this win. Good luck with the rest of the tournament. Don't go anywhere, guys. We've got one more round of Swiss, and then we're heading into our top card. Don't go anywhere. We've got lots more coverage coming your way.